to season two episode number 16 of the playstation collectors podcast and Thanks tonight for inviting me. joel to the show welcome joel hi Ooh, what's up buddy well, well here for the first time maybe more if this goes well i hope it does <laughs> yeah definitely joel tell, tell, tell us for uh, everyone who doesn't know you who you are and what you do and where you're from all right. Well, I live in Mexico, uh, Mexicali in Baja California, which is on the border with California. I also live in El Centro, California, which is uh, one of the cities uh, on the border with Mexico. So I have the opportunity and the pleasure of experiencing both sides of collecting on, on the border, on the American side and the Mexican side. It's pretty cool. That's yeah, really interesting. We've heard a lot yeah. of um, collectors from the American side, but we've never had a collector on the show from Mexico. So it's really interesting to have you on tonight, man. Uh, so tell us about your um, video game collection. I know you've got a really impressive collection. Well, yeah, I mean, I've been collecting since, uh, I'd say, 1996, 1997, when I was still in high school. And I haven't stopped ever since. So it's been more than... I'd say 25 years now, or just about 25 years in collecting. It's awesome. So, what was your first console that you were passionate about collecting for? Uh, the first the first console that I would say I was started collecting more for was PlayStation. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> yeah. PlayStation yeah. One. Yeah. Well, when I was a little kid, I didn't have any of this stuff, so uh. I had a we in our family we had a hand me down uh, system so in like the early 90s I was rocking the 2600 when everybody else had the Nintendo and I really started out with that system and I was playing with that a lot until uh, eventually uh, that system was sold off because actually my brothers it was given it was gifted to him by his godmother so I was really sad when when that got sold and I was like for a couple of years without video games but eventually uh, when I got to high school, I had summer jobs and I started uh, buying things and I got the ball rolling. So I went from having uh, nothing to having all the all the consoles. Like in the, by the late nineties, I already had the Genesis, the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, the PlayStation, the Saturn, N64, and the Game Boy and the Ataris. So it hasn't stopped since. Sounds like you're really ahead of the curve, Paul, man. Not not many people had all those systems in the late 90s that's so awesome yeah no so, me but back then nobody really thought of it as retro it was just it was just there so the, the retro term just started popping up like in the later 2000s early knots so i wonder i mean i bet it is for a lot a case for a lot of people too but i remember when i was a kid you know like you said it, it you know, my family couldn't afford tons of games and you know we could we got what we got and we were happy to what we have but we all just dreamed about you know man imagine if i could buy all these games imagine if i could have all the games i wanted blah, blah. i remember i used to literally have dreams about 
you know, waking up and having like 200 Super Nintendo games and running downstairs and be like, oh, crap, that was just a dream. I only have five. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, as we all got older, I think like almost all of us got that bug to be like, you know, I can do what I want now. I'm, I'm going to buy every damn game I want. I just want I'm getting them all like I just I, uh, it's so nice to be able to, to yeah. just do that. And now we all have the opposite problem where we're like, man, we're going to play all these games. Yeah, I know. Definitely. Time for this. I got all these games now, and I don't have any time. It's so funny how everything changes. Well, older. kids yeah, they those, those... don't really have that problem because kids have options to, if you're savvy, to download things, and you know you're getting free games every month, and there isn't a lack of games to play these days. It's quality of what I'm going to be playing. Well, if I if I yeah, was but a kid even these days, even pirating quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Even so, I mean, kids will find a way to entertain themselves. Like a couple of years ago, I had my, my nieces and nephews over, and they saw my collection. And they were they were pretty awestruck. I mean, anybody would be awestruck when, you, when they see a big room of games like that. Uh, but what I did for them, just to, just to try something out, you know, just not an experiment, but just to see how they would react, I actually pulled out a Pico, a Sega Pico, and, and they were having a blast with that. So these are these are kids that were like a couple years ago. They were like seven, eight years old. This was yeah, this was like about five years ago or so. But they were having a blast with that. I mean, they, they found it interesting, you know, the big colorful system and then those those storybook uh, cartridges and how the pencil did whatever they wanted on the screen. So they they really enjoyed that. But I mean, kids will be kids. They'll they'll find they'll find a way to play with whatever's around. I and also. I a lot of those old games uh, that, you know, you would love when we were little, they're timeless games. Like I have, you know, my great, like my, my nieces, kids, I don't even know what to call them. Like grand, grand nephews. I don't even know how old am I. God damn. Uh, but they, uh, they love Mario. You know what I mean? Still to this day, he's like five years old and Mario is his favorite thing in the world. He likes Mario one, two and three plays them like hours. Every time he comes over, like it doesn't matter, man. Like those, those, those games are still really fun and they're still, yeah. Let's just call it video game soul food. Exactly. Yeah, it's just good for it. Mm -hmm. Hey, Joel, how many games have you got in your collection today, man? Well, I'm like, oh, I, I try to keep counting my stuff, but I, I've lost count a couple of times. But <laughs> for the most part, I'm about like 150 games away from 6,000, just over multiple systems. That's crazy. That's really yeah. impressive. Man, and that's mainly North American titles. Definitely, uh, it's very it's very few sports games. I don't actively look for them. I know some people do want to get the complete collection and they buy uh, sports games, but if I find them for like a dollar or two, yeah, I'll get them. But I don't actively look for them unless they're like special editions or just something that just makes them different than, than usual. But most of my my almost six thousand games, I'd say like. Probably like 200 of them are sports games, but everything else is just you know, normal action adventure, role playing games, uh, the good simulations. Stuff. Yeah, the good <laughs> stuff. The stuff right, collectors right. like, you know. Yeah. That there aren't collectible sports games and there aren't good sports games. There are, but let's be real, most of us aren't interested in that stuff. But yeah, there but are I'm sports really games I love. Them. Like, I've started selling off my collection and the first lot of games to go were all the sport games that I'm not interested in because it's like, why do I own every Madden game? I don't like playing Madden games. Why do I own every hockey game? I don't like playing hockey games. Exactly. Like, it just doesn't. This, make this sense. also goes. This also goes back to when you were when you were a kid because even back then, I mean, I know there's some like people that love. Uh, I think it was Sega Genesis '94 uh, hockey mm -hmm. and '95. Yeah. Because I mean, back back yeah. Those games, I mean, they're sports games, but for some people, they have like uh, more of a significance in their childhood. So, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. some people might not want to get a uh, Madden 2001 on PlayStation 2, but for some people, that might have been their first game. So, th it does hold a special spot for them. Right. So, yeah, I, that could I can be understand. That could be the game that their dad bought for them when they were eight years old on their birthday, and they played it all the time until they were like twelve. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You never know. So it's everybody's anybody any game could be someone's favorite game. That's that's yeah. what it is. And, and, that, and that can be like any 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 game can become collectible or any any game like what's that what's that joke that was going on in some of the groups where somebody had all the Mary Kate and Ashley games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that that one that one was going around for a couple of days, but I mean. 
there, there's a subset for that. I mean, there's a subset for anything. But, mm. but yeah, I mean, to I collect own this... every Tiger Woods golf game. All of them. Don't know why. I, never... <laughs> no, I love FIFA. That's my sport yeah. game that I love. I love so, it. I love it. I'm not going to knock sport games, but I will knock the um, idea of how sport games are released for it annually. Full price. They don't really change much. It doesn't feel like it, you should be paying full price, you know. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just the way they run now. I mean, they they could they could uh, change the rules a little bit. They could update things, but they have that thing where it's like, if it ain't broke, uh, don't fix it. So the mm. those companies they just pump them out like that because they know that people buy them anyways and they have their fan base. Yeah, yeah. It won't be until. Yeah. A new company comes along and decides to release like the new updates, as in like the new rosters is like free DLC to compete mm -hmm. with the game. Another thing too is you know like if we're talking about Mexico is that FIFA is very popular over here in Mexico too, and other other Latin American countries. So uh, when I buy a couple of video games to resell, because I usually buy them in in, North, in the United States and take them back here to Mexico just to make a few bucks off of them, people always ask for FIFAs. Even if they have a uh, Xbox 360 or even the original Xbox or the PS1, they'll ask me, "Hey, you got any FIFA games?" And uh, sometimes they're easy to find, and sometimes they're not easy to find. But but there's always been uh, a demand for for FIFA games in Latin America, even if it's an old uh, roster from a couple years ago. The the experience is still there, and there's still fans of those games, and and they'll still buy uh, FIFA games regardless. It, it is still the same experience. I played FIFA 2007 the other day with, with Andy. We had a great time. <laughs> I could see, um, you know, locally certain games being more popular too because what if your team sucks, but they were great in 2008. So, like, everyone in that area loves that, that 2008 game <laughs> because your yeah. team has, like, got great stats. Like, that's yeah. the one, you know what I mean? Like, I, I was a Bruins fan, so, you know, you take a few years where they won the cup, you know, I'm like, those are probably the games I'd want to play because they're, like, ranked in the highest, you know, and it's stuff like that I could see being uh, kind of nostalgic for people. And the rosters themselves, like, if you love a team, um, you know, I could see you wanting to have that, like, memorialized because teams break up and they, everyone, you know, gets spread out and it's not the same mm -hmm. anymore and, you know, how it is, so. Yeah, I can understand that. It's also, like... I mean, uh, FIFA and soccer is worldwide, so I know many uh, people in, in the United States and North America that don't really uh, follow soccer or FIFA with the passion like they do in other countries. But, yeah, you do have a point where, where one year one team is great and the next year they're not that great. So or your favorite uh, player gets traded, you know, and they were, like, on that team. You know what I mean? Like, you could have a player that was on your team for, like, eight years and then they leave and, you know. I could see that. And then we do have some people. My, my brother-in-law was way into soccer. He played for, like, Notre Dame in college and stuff. So we definitely have people who like uh, FIFA and soccer. Trust me. <laughs> Believe me. Yeah, but, I mean, but yeah, but it's not, there, there is it doesn't have, like, like, the like, mass. Like, uh, yeah. It's like it kind of go, yeah, it kinda goes back to that to that uh, old old uh, thinking, you know, like, I'm, I'm not, I guess I still I could still follow that idea. But back when we were kids, you know, like, video games are so different from sports. So why would there be a sports video game when I can play a fantasy game? So there's still that connection where people used to think, oh, like sports games are, aren't, aren't, aren't for me. But I mean, with years of have passed by, I mean, uh, sports games are, are a part of video games, no matter, no matter what, like our, our thoughts were back in the day, you know, trying to separate mm -hmm. the, the jocks from the nerds. And now that, that line is blurred. So I remember being in Amsterdam in 2018 in September when FIFA got released. And I've always bought the new FIFAs every year in Australia and it's been a big release. But being in Am in Europe, a country where FIFA's soccer's the biggest thing, it's number one sport. It was in every single shop, every window sylph had it. I was blown out at like how big this game was over there. And yeah, it's, it would be the same in Latin American countries compared to America where there are major sports like NBA and Madden and hockey that are more popular or just as popular as soccer where, you know, in like Europe, these other sports like handball is just as popular as NBA in Northern European countries, you know, or cycling, but yeah, soccer dwarfs them. It's crazy. So for me, 
what's funny about sports games is like I, I growing up I always liked sports games. I played them on Nintendo and Genesis and Super Nintendo, NBA Jam, whatever. But like I, as soon as they started to get like re, like much more realistic and actually like the sport, I didn't like them anymore because like I I liked the the video game version of the sport. I like the arcadey version. I don't want to like play football and actually need to know what the plays mean and i didn't want to like it got too too complicated for me and so it's funny like it, it that when you say it blurs the line between nerd and jock like i felt like i was because like this is too realistic i'm like i this is too much like the real deal i want to be a nerd i like i want to play like my favorite hockey game is nhl hits it's just three on three hockey it's very arcadey it's like not really well, like nba realistic. jam exactly nba jam exactly like those are my favorite types of like sports games where it's is the sport but it's more a game you know what i mean like you're throwing fireballs in, on, on nba jam and you're you know it's silly and you can do dunks from the three-point line and like it's just crazy you know it's not supposed to be like you know but i'm not poo-pooing that other experience like i know like you know figsy like you like their like football manager is a thing it's not even you don't even play the game you just manage the sports team like you're an actual coach, you know? So it's like the NFL head coach. and Yeah. Like, yeah mm -hmm. as well. So it's like that. It's the same thing with racing games. Like I much prefer cruising USA to Gran Turismo. Like I want yeah, like, definitely me too. Big laser beams and stuff shooting on my car. I don't want it to be like, Thank I don't man, actually have to that, shift dude. and look at my RPMs and stuff. I'm like, that's oh, too much. People, some people do like that. I mean, that, that's just like, they like yeah. that added to realism. So back in the day, it, it was, uh, it wasn't as realistic as it is now, but I mean, when it went to, when Gran Turismo went from PS1 to PS2, they gave you a whole lot more options. And even with PS3, I mean, those little details are there. I mean, I I tried playing uh, the PS3 Gran Turismo's, but it's just too much to get into. But I did like playing the PS1 version, and I did play some of the PS2. But I mean, just those options are there for people, and some people like like realism. I mean, they can oh, yeah. uh, they can put themselves into into that feeling, like the like you was talking about the simulator for for the sports. So if somebody has a simulator where their car if if they have like grippy tires or they have a spoiler at a certain degree, they, they like that, that feeling of, of um, control or, or options that they can implement and mm -hmm. become the best digital racer they can. Well, that, that's, I mean, to, to, on the counterpoint of that, that new movie that came out is it's the opposite. It's about people who they got so into a game that was so realistic. They could really become racers. It's like, you know what I mean? It's the idea. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it is cool. And I'm not saying, uh, you know, so I'm, I, there's game, gaming for everybody. I, I want every type of game to be made. I want everybody to have a good time. It just ain't for me. It's like flight simulators. If just some of these games, like you can fly a plane, if you can play these games. <laughs> like, they aren't yeah. that complicated. So yeah, Microsoft Flight Simulator wasn't for me. I played it for an hour, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to learn this. I just I when, to when, <laughs> when you when you talked about that, it reminded me of, of Snakes on a Plane, where that where that one guy had the PSP and he was trying to learn how to fly a plane because. The pilot, the pilot was was out of, was KO'd. Remember that movie, Snakes on a Plane, oh, with Samuel Jackson? Oh yeah, I know the movie. I'm not a remember. snake. Yeah, <laughs> well, there was a, there was a scene where where one of the passengers had to fly a plane, and and he I guess he played the I think the PSP a lot, and and it was a flight simulator game, so he actually had to use the knowledge from the video game to to fly the plane that's and awesome. land it. That's, that's definitely awesome. a movie plot. <laughs> Sounds like a book from Snakes on a Plane. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, well, I had a question about um, where yeah, no, you get so, games from. Um, do you get all your games locally? Do you buy games online? I'd say, uh, well, uh, about 90% of my games are, are local and about like 10% is online. So I haven't really uh, decided to grab like a bunch of titles online. I'm usually I do when I see a good sale, but I know, I know, some, I know it's easy enough to just click and say buy it. But usually, I, I just enjoy it more when I when I find it out there at the, at the flea markets or the thrift stores that are nearby me. And that's so you have patience. The question mm -hmm. of where, have patience. where do you go when you're looking for games? So it is flea markets and thrift stores. Yeah, that I got. I got. A, well, there used to be two flea markets, but now there's just one left here in my town, in my county, in Southern California, and I have like two or three thrift stores I can go to. So usually. Uh, 
there's enough there for me. You know, like I go like every other day to the thrift store and the flea markets once a week. So this, this is not on the California side. So there's plenty of me that to find. I mean, I'm always every week I'm buying like $30, $40 of stuff. So I'm usually I'm not buying $30, $40 of games or like one or two games online every week. But I'm, I am spending $30, $40 a week on just random stuff that I find. And random stuff eventually turns into all of this here behind me. No, that's awesome. As I what are the other things that you are picking up besides video games? Well, so it's been movies. I, I, I mean, I, I not consider myself a movie buff, but I've seen enough movies that I mean, there's quite a bit of movies out there. So that's that's another way of just collecting this. Uh, Transformers toys, you know, anything from from my from my youth that that I that I remember seeing. I mean, like I said, there's stuff that's out there. I mean, going to yard sales and flea markets and thrift stores, you always find a box of, of just random things that you might not have seen the light of day in like 20, 30 years and you open up a box and it smells old, but the stuff inside is, is awesome. I mean, I found like old magazines or found uh, books, just stuff from like back in the mid eighties that, I mean, some people didn't want it no more. It ends up going to the flea market or somebody donated it to the thrift store. And usually you got to, look through it there and see what see what's good because eventually that stuff in the thrift store if the thrift store can't sell it it's going to go to the to the trash bin but there's always something cool every week i mean it's 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 for me that's part of the fun it's not just finding video games but just seeing stuff that you haven't seen in in 10 15 20 years i get excited when i find red like dvds i haven't found before and cds and different things like that it's even Definitely. though it's like it mightn't be for my collection, I might sell it. I still get excited to find that stuff. It's fun finding Lego, yeah, it is. like that. So I think it's um, if you're like really into the actual like thrifting and going to people, you know, yard sailing and flea marketing and stuff like that. Knowing about games is is great, but you really should have like a general knowledge about valuable things in general. Like you should know. Um, you know, like you said, like, I think you mentioned earlier, like old coins, like knowing a little bit about coins, just a general cursory knowledge is probably worth it. Or knowing a little bit about toys, action figures and stuff like that. That's pretty much, do you guys ever watch, um, gaming off the grid? Have you ever seen that YouTube channel? Yeah. Yeah. So they, I think I might have seen one or two episodes. Yeah. They're cool dudes. They, they do like a lot of thrifting stuff and like buying and yard selling and stuff like that. But like, I remember they, they did a video where they, they, they found like these little, plastic hats that were on wrestling figures and they sold them for like i can't remember like 25 bucks a piece these little tiny plastic hats because they just knew that those were the hats that go on these little wrestling figures from the 90s mm -hmm. and they made like 50 bucks off of these little tiny pieces yeah those plastic. are the first things that so, get thrown away those are the those yeah. are the things at the bottom of toy boxes that once you pull out the toys and you look down at the bottom it's just little chunks of plastic most people are yep. going to say not nah, it's trash but and if you know how to, to look it's going to be good stuff the little plastic gun they hold is worth money. The little thing that clips on G I Joe, G.I. Joe money. Yeah, guns. all the little pieces and stuff that pop off and fall off. Like if you I went I had a really knowledge, um good, good score to on remember Teenage Newton um Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys from the late eighties, early nineties. So a lot of them came with weapons and mm -hmm. the weapons get detached from the toys. So I, I had a bag of weapons at the pawn shop and they sold for a fortune. It was like Fifteen dollars for one or two little toys, uh, one or yep. two guns. Then it's actually more than the figure itself. Uh, yeah, but they, they, yeah. someone can spend years trying to find that little piece. So that that that, that right there, you just saved them a bunch of time. Yeah, hundred percent. I was going to say by working in the pawn shop, I learned uh, not just what items were, but how to look something up. So a big tip that I use, and um, you guys definitely take this on if you've never heard it before. Um, but everyone's phone. If you've got an iPhone, you might have to download it. But if you've got an um, M, uh, Android phone, you'll have it on. It's just Google. And you go into Google, and there'll be a little picture of a camera. It's called Google Lens. And bring Google Lens up. Take a photo of absolutely anything. And if it's on Google Images, it'll tell you what it is. It'll show you sold listings. Or I've sales. done that. With this. Google Lens is the best thing at garage sales. because yeah. And you never know, man, like... Um, like concert DVDs worth tons of money. Some of them, like I am into death metal, like a lot, like I'm a huge into like, you know, heavy metal and stuff from the nineties and the two thousands. Some of those CDs and those like live DVDs, they worth a fortune, dude. Oh yeah. 
they so are. if you if you just know music and stuff and just you're popular you know, just that i could make a bunch of money just flipping cds and stuff so it's good to I, i've already. done that i've done that before too a couple of years ago there was a store called uh oh i forgot the name of it but um uh, uh, Hastings is what it's called. They they were big in uh, all over the country, United States, and for many years they would buy they would buy uh, music CDs and and DVDs from you. So there was times at the flea market where I lived nearby where I could grab. Uh, there were people that'd be selling stuff, and they'd say, "Fill your bag for five dollars." So you get a regular plastic bag that they would give you, and you just fill it up with just music CDs and DVDs and video games. Mm -hmm. So I would actually find concert DVDs and music cds and movies that that i knew that were worth money because eventually like i said those, those stores will buy stuff off of you so when i would buy a, a bag full of, of cds uh, i fit like 30 40 cds in a bag really packed because the guys didn't care they just wanted to sell stuff off at the flea, at the flea market mm -hmm. so i would grab those 30 cds and i'll take them to, to that store also the store that does that too is they used to do it as fye so fye and hastings have a similar uh, mode of operating where they would take trade-ins and, and, and give you money for it or store credit. So I've actually uh, taken music CDs of that. Out of those 30 that I grabbed, they only take like 20 of them. 10 weren't nothing, wasn't worth anything to them. They would say, oh, it's only 5 cents, 10 cents. It's just like a deterrent so, so nobody would turn them in. Or they say, we can't take them. But there will be CDs that were like 3 4 5 $6. And those, uh, those 20 CDs ended up being like almost like 40 bucks in store credit when it only cost me five. <laughs> so, so that's, that's a good way. That's, that's also a, a good way how I, I grew my, my collection a couple of years ago. Cause those stores, uh, well, Hastings went out of business a couple of years ago, but cause of you, I, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That, that, I've, I've heard that joke already. So that's nothing new to me, <laughs> but I mean, uh, all my jokes That's, are old. I got <laughs> I got a bunch <laughs> of, of PS2 and PSP games, taking them to Fye and Hastings back when back when they were kind of expensive because Hastings they knew they knew their stuff was like a little bit of expensive, but if you had trade-ins, you could still make a good buck off, off the stuff. So I would, I said, well, I would buy a five-dollar bag of just random media, take it to that store, and I get forty bucks, and a couple of years ago, well, not a couple of years ago, this was like probably like 2005, 2006. I, I took uh, my stuff to to resell to Hastings and I ended up having like almost 200 bucks in, in like five or six different uh, store credit gift cards and I ended up buying a PSP with that. Oof. From $5. I love yeah, it. so I'm most, I'm more, more likely I spent like maybe like 50 bucks in, in just random flea market stuff i pulled the stuff i wanted and then the rest uh got traded into to those types of stores and i ended up getting a, a psp for like i just paid taxes on it probably like 15 bucks in taxes i love it man hey joel i wanted but, to ask you about um brick and mortar stores in mexico that sell video games what options do you have to buy new games these days well unfortunately in mexico games are expensive but, but most people here, since we're on the border with, with the U.S., uh, most people have family or friends or some people in Mexico have a, have a visa to just cross the border, which people can do. There's there's a, a visa only as people go like 20, 30 miles into the United States. If they go any farther, then they need a, a permit. But there's plenty of stores here on the border that can save people money because uh, in Mexico, like, a game can be, like, 70 80 90 dollars in the equivalent of us money and in the in the games they go to gamestop or target and the game is 60 bucks 65 with with taxes hmm. so most people they'll 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 get somebody say oh bring me this game or, or they'll cross the border they'll they'll cross like in an hour or two then catch a taxi or or the, the bus or they'll go in their own cars and then they'll go to the stores over there and then they'll take them back to to their homes in mets so in Mexicali, in Mexico, where, where, I, where I live, right across the border, there's a, a lot of influx of games from the U.S. where people can get games uh, pretty cheap. But even even though there's still uh, resellers, there's still stores, grocery stores uh, have them. There's a couple of like chain chain grocery stores here in Mexico where you can get games like that. You can you can get them for like, for yeah, but about fifty bucks if they're on special, but. 
most of those are old games. Since we're on the border here, people can see a game in the store in Mexico, and if they can't cross to the U.S., they're going to say, okay, I'll buy it. But most people will just call a friend or they'll call me, and I have friends that say, oh, get me this game for me, and I just charge them like five, ten bucks, and I bring it for them. But some games uh, are expensive, but people sometimes don't don't have a choice. But since we're here on the border, there are more choices than just simply buying from from a Mexican Walmart or another uh, grocery store chain that, that does have them. Is there any game stops or any video game specific stores or anything? Oh yeah, there there are plenty. I mean, there there's uh, there's some independent stores in in Mexico where. Some some of them, but like there's there's still uh, radio shacks in Mexico, so really? they're wow. yeah, they're they're not exactly the same as as U.S. Uh, radio shacks that there were back in the past, but the, you you do get a similar feeling going to them, and you do see games there. But me having the mentality that I can cross the border and go get it cheaper, some of these games just go under my radar. So I, I think to myself, you know, I'm I'm lucky enough that that I can go to the U.S and find it cheaper or go to GameStop and get it for like 15 20 bucks when over there it's still like 40 50 bucks so i'm 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 grateful for that but um most gamers here in the border i mean they'll know somebody who knows somebody that can get them a game for cheap you feel bad for collectors that are like down in Mexico City that don't have the option of going over the border and getting cheap games and things like that. Because if it if it really is seventy eighty dollars US for new titles, it's like highway robbery. Really, it's so unfair. It, it, it is, but uh, one other good thing, as well, it's positive for Mexico is like for the for the past almost two years now, ever since uh, the, the COVID started, uh, Amazon started doing uh, more business in Mexico. So the thing is that there are Amazon uh, retailers and there are options for people in Mexico to get a game on Amazon. So that's still way cheaper than the grocery stores because, like I said, if there's a, a game on Amazon Mexico, it's more or less the same price as the U.S. So uh, going back to those uh, mom and pop stores, I mean, there are games that a couple years ago that you couldn't get them. Uh, you can only get them through people that would come physically to the United States and, and buy lots of games from – from GameStop and take them back to Mexico and from there they'll find like a supply chain to send it farther into Mexico but uh, those those game those uh, options are still there so people still do it there's still people that are uh, old school and they don't like to buy online or they don't have the capability of buying online from Amazon or Mercado Libre which is another like Amazon like store that's in Mexico it's, it's actually been longer than Amazon but uh, those those places uh, do give people options, and most people, instead of buying the grocery store chain that's called, uh, there's called Mega, or there's Lay, or there's Bodega Aurera, which is actually like a subsidiary of Walmart. And those places, they have video games, which sometimes, I mean, I'm not saying that, that they're expensive, but they do get uh, clearance games sometimes. So people do have the option of buying clearance games in those grocery stores. So there's been... Um, some Switch games that go really cheap sometimes because it's old stock. So those uh, those video games are the equivalent of like twenty bucks, fifteen bucks. So somebody's lucky they'll find they'll find a cheap Switch game, or they'll find a clearance uh, Xbox game for like two hundred pesos, which is like probably now like nine bucks right now because right now the the peso is pretty good right now. It's it's been going up uh, for the past uh, couple months. It used to be like eighteen, nineteen. Uh, pesos to to a dollar but right now it's going like at 16 50 17 but uh there's there is options i mean there's always going to be gamers everywhere uh mexico has a lot of gamers a lot of arcade gamers uh most of most of their games like i said the the stuff trickles down so most of their most of the items that people buy in mexico they came from up north which up north means uh north america or united states so there is a little uh, route for stuff from like uh, uh, Goodwill, uh, Goodwill leftovers, or the or the Goodwill pallet sales that they have. I'm not sure if you ever heard of that, where yeah, where they sell, they sell uh, Goodwill. The wait, where yeah. some stores won't yeah. even let them be sold. They like re refuse people buying them and stuff. Yeah. So th those those places, I've I've been to some in Phoenix and L.A. and you buy everything by the pound. But some places, I mean. 
there's people that actually buy those stuff. They'll, they'll, they'll buy them and then they'll load them up on the truck. They'll go take them south to the border to Mexico and they'll, they'll pay a, a fee to customs in Mexico. And I've seen trucks full of just everything, not just video. I mean, there's, there's video games in there. There's like furniture and TVs and clothing and tables, just anything that you would find in a regular thrift store or a yard sale. There's people that would pick up all that stuff and then they take it to Mexico right on the border where I'm at. And then from, from Mexicali, though, it'll get distributed to other parts of Mexico. So eventually that guy in Mexico City would find a so-so looking uh, PS3 or PS4 game that yeah. eventually that it, it traveled from Amazon. Yeah. You it traveled from the U.S. Like, let's say it was at a, at a thrift store in a Goodwill in San Jose, California. And eventually, what doesn't sell at the Goodwill, they they bin it or they'll send it to another warehouse to be sold by the pound. And all that merchandise has to go somewhere. And eventually, it does make it to Mexico. And in Mexico, it spreads it spreads out farther. And eventually, gamers in Mexico do find a couple of good things. Not as much as it used to be. Not now with people being more active online and and selling stuff before they donate it to Goodwill. But there's there's still diamonds in the rough out here in Mexico. So I had another question. It was a little bit more complicated this one. So um, I was under the impression that Sony Latin America had their um, head warehouse in Mexico and they distributed all their games to um, South American countries like Colombia, Argentina, Peru, Chile, etc. cetera. Um, and then those games have Spanish on the covers and on the back. Are those the same games that are being sold in like Mexican Walmarts? And some like, some are U.S. games, and they just uh, slap a a sticker and the, and the ESRB because the Mexico did implement their own uh, ratings a couple of years ago. So usually yeah. when you're you're getting a game in uh, from Mexican Walmart or Mexican Amazon, it has their own special ratings. Uh, some are aren't quite printed onto the paper, but somehow a sticker on top of the paper uh, on top of the plastic plastic wrap on those games. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of games are said disc made in Mexico, so they they do have some sort of manufacturing. But um, I'm not too familiar. But there are games in Mexico that are in Spanish, or some like in Brazil that have the the moniker Favoritos, which is the they have that on a lot of PS3 games. Uh, I have seen here in the border uh, there are some uh, Madden games from like the Xbox 360. Well, they'll say in the corner in Espanol, which means in Spanish. So I've seen some uh, sports video games that have uh, they have some Spanish content in them, but some of some of the games are are still their U.S. games. But people in Mexico find a way to play them. I mean, most people in Mexico they don't speak English very well, but they can certainly read it. So they can still enjoy the game, even though it's still in English. Those games that you mentioned, the ones in Brazil, they all say made in Mexico as well. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking there's probably a manufacturing plant in Mexico. It's, it's easier to, since we're south of the border, you know, easier to manufacture them in Mexico and then from there ship, ship them out to where they need to go in, in Latin American countries. I had another question, John. Um, I wanted to ask you about piracy in Mexico. Is it really prevalent today? And was really prevalent in the past? Uh, I think piracy is still is is still there. I mean, it's 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 any it's everywhere. But I mean, no, most most people don't talk about it, or or most or most people most young people. It's just it's just a fact of life for them. Because I mean, even like I was talking about, even games back in the day were were pretty expensive. So uh, most people they just uh, find a Wii, find an Xbox, a classic Xbox. And they they hack the hard drives or they put something on the SD card and they'll play all those games. Or they'll uh, go on an Android and just load them up with ROMs or even on PCs. I mean, I, I know uh, in Mexico, there's a lot of people that, li uh, that like Fightcade, which is an online uh, fighting game mm -hmm. uh, the repository where people can play video game, uh, fighting games with each other online. So I know I know a lot of people like to do that. And I know in Mexico and other Latin American countries, there are people that have uh, 
hack the Steam accounts or they have uh, Steam Steam games that can still play online even if you're not connected to it. So I know I know there's Steam games that that can't play can't play online, but they, they they still have connections online. But even though you don't connect them to the internet, they still play. But I think people have a way to circumvent that and they can play games online while using uh, a deactivated account or using an account that that is uh, modified in some way. That's It's awesome that it doesn't... We've had a lot of collectors on here from different countries, and a lot of these countries have got really expensive video games, and there's always... Gamers always find a way to play games. It doesn't matter what country you're in or, you know, if games are banned here, or it doesn't matter. Gamers will find a way to play their games. It's Definitely. Awesome. So you gotta, that, you gotta do what you gotta do. I, like, yeah. I've been playing a lot of like PS1 imports lately that there's no way I'm ever being able to afford them. And so, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But yeah, I'm having fun. Well, I mean, like the, the, the easiest systems to hack, I mean, everybody knows they're, they're Nintendo consoles. I mean, you can you can get a ton of games on an R4 and put them in a, in a 3DS or a DS, and you can pretty much play anything on those. Mm -hmm. But most people, I know, I know they. They'll still play on their Wii's or even a hacked Xbox 360 with, with just burn a GTA 4 or GTA 5 on the 360 in Mexico. And there'll be a lot of kids and young adults having fun just playing uh, copied games on, on an Xbox. And that's the most important part. They're playing on something that would be deemed worthless to so, myself or maybe Joe, like a burnt Grand Theft Auto disc, but they've, they've probably got three, 400 hours of enjoyment out of this, you know, and that's amazing. All right. Yeah, I remember when, uh, gosh, I think it was a Dreamcast was the first system um, I saw. And I lost your... Oh, we lost them. Lost Joel for a second. It'll come right Sorry, back. Sorry, guys. So. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, no, I'm, I think, I'm pretty sure uh, the Dreamcast was the first system I knew that somebody had that could play burnt games. And I was just blown away. Like he was just putting regular discs in and in his Dreamcast and playing games. I'm like, what the heck? This is amazing. I, I honestly am jealous of the generation that has the ability to have like a little emulation set right out the gate and have this giant free library of games because they never will know what it's like to have to play the same five Nintendo All games right. over and over again for like three years. They, they don't know. <laughs> Welcome Don't back, never... Joel. Yeah, sometimes it cuts out, but um, just join back if it ever mm -hmm. does that. Well, it's all international, so think about it. The the signal's jumping from United States to Mexico to Australia, so. It's being hosted in Australia, too, so. And the server's probably in America, so it's like ding, 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 yeah. ding. Yeah. <laughs> I love the fact you brought up burnt games, Joe. You've reminded me of when I was a kid. One of my friends um, I went to school with, he went to Vanuatu for a year as like a... I think his um, mum got a job as a teacher over there. And when he came back, he had a PS1 from Vanuatu and it was hacked. And he had all, like he had 200 games and they were all burnt. And oh. they only worked in his system. And I'd go around there and play all these games. And I didn't understand why I couldn't borrow them. And I borrow, he lent me one once. It didn't work. And I'm like, it didn't work. He's like, I told you how you have to play it on my system. And like, I would always just want to go around there because he had all the best games. And <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, that was actually uh, pretty prevalent in the late 90s when people started to DIY and hack and put mod chips in their PS1s. I think that's, 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 the, that's also a reason why PlayStation became so popular because it was uh, really easy back in the day for people to uh, apply a, and solder a mod chip to their PS1 to play any type of game and usually in the late 90s you you could burn a game like in five ten minutes now it takes like a minute or two but i remember in the late 90s it would take like 20 minutes to do an audio cd so i know back then when you had a burn ps1 and and copied ps1 games you were you were the top dog because mm -hmm. it took you a while to burn all those games and if you had a stack of 30 40 games that means that you had a somebody with the a decent computer back in the day that could make copies of, of those games for you yeah you're right like it was easy to burn cds i used to make cds all the time and like even i bought um cd cases and i would print the artwork out with 
the track list so it would look like a legit cd make my own custom artwork for the front fig zigs mix volume number four <laughs> yeah, I, I can see uh you have like european techno or or <laughs> or, or, or a little bit of industrial trance. No, I, I was a little kid, so I would, I would um, go to the Abba. parents and my brother, and I'll be like, Ethan, I'll pick five songs each for the car, and this is for our next road trip, and like make road trip with CDs and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I, I had I had a friend that would do that for me too. I mean, he, like he had like back in the late nineties, he had his computer and he would make CDs for friends and he charged people like three, four bucks. So he'd he'd make he'd make he make a little bit of money just saying, Oh, I can get you this music. This is like in the late nineties or two thousands with like LimeWire and Napster. Remember those? Yeah. So so those 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 sites, you know, when the beginning of when the internet started getting more more prevalent, I mean you could find a lot of stuff back then. So I I know like in those early days, I mean, if we go back to uh copying games in those late nineties, early two thousands, once uh going back to uh, the Dreamcast. If we're, talk, if we're talking about uh, burning games, I'm, I'm pretty sure the Dreamcast, back when it uh, died back in in the 2002 2003, everybody already had a stack of a uh, burned Dreamcast game. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. Is the Dreamcast games? That's uh, the, yeah, remember. they got a stack of uh, burned Dreamcast games that they downloaded from Mega Upload. <laughs> Yeah, it's taking us back. Hey guys, I think it's time. So yeah, I, I remember that site, Mega Upload, where you can find any Dreamcast game, and you can quickly download it. Joel's internet struggling a little bit here, guys. Joe's frozen as well. Maybe it's me. <laughs> when the guys get back, we'll get into the quiz. Sorry for the um, technical delays, guys. Joe's coming back. Might be a second. Hey. Hey, hey everyone's frozen. Yeah. <laughs> Dream died for me. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I can see myself on the stream, so it's not mine who died. <laughs> when John gets back, we'll get into the Figsy quiz, Joe. I think North America's under attack. <laughs> the internet's under attack. That's true. So we're getting, while we're, we're getting, getting DDoS attacked, <laughs> let's get into the chat question because that sounds okay. like a good idea. Sure. So let's give you guys an update on the score. Uh, as you guys know, first person to five points will win this, a video game shipped anywhere in the world. So we have in the lead, Mario Mario has three points. Cyrus has got two points. And then on one point, we've got Lulu Girl, Banffy, Jason Trickster, Jimmy J, and Windy Corner TV. So how to participate is easy. All you have to do is... Be in chat live. You have to correctly answer the question. And to correctly answer the question, we need the full title of the video game. So today's chat question, what is the video game? This one's tough. Oh, my goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pictures. <laughs> wow. This one's tough, guys. Oh, my goodness. If you are watching on um, listening on in, uh, on iTunes, uh, unfortunately there isn't video on iTunes. There is video on Spotify now, but um, if you want to see what's going on, jump onto YouTube and you will be able to see the chat question. This is a tough one. All right. Welcome back, Joe. I, I saw I saw uh, one of the Pac-Man uh, ghosts, but I didn't see anything else because I got kicked out for a second. 
So that is our chat question for the week. Oh, well, so the chat to get enough for us. Um, but why chat are thinking about the answer, Joel? We're going to play Figsy's quiz. Have you ever seen the uh, quiz show before, Joel? No, well, this will be my first time. All right, Joel, would you like to go first or would you like Joe to go first? Uh, let him go first because I need to see how this works. Let's do it. All right, guys. Today's quiz, Joe will be going first. Joel will be going second. So there'll be eight questions. Each mm -hmm. question is going to be worth one point. If you get the question wrong, it will go to the other person. Tonight, we will be, be debuting a new style of question format, which will be really fun. I've never done it before. Uh, we'll be in first for us, so hopefully it goes well, but we'll get into that one that question comes. So let's get into the quiz of question number one, guys. So question one, this one's for you, Joe. All right. Who of the Dead or Alive characters is the uh, is the owner of the island in Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball? Is it Zach, Bass Armstrong, Leon, or Tina Armstrong? You know, I was just looking at getting some of these games. I, for some reason, recently was like, I think I'm going to start buying all of the fighting games. That's my latest like thing I think I'm going to do. But now they're um, waifu simulators. I know. And now I'm wishing I had pulled the trigger on this. Um, <laughs> so just because he looks like a goddamn baller, I'm going to go with Bass Armstrong. Incorrect. He Joel. should own the island. Look at him. He's got the gold chains. He's got the penthouse apartment. Do you know, Joel? Yeah, it's going to be Zach. Correct answer. Is new Zach Island. Joel takes the point. Nice, brother. All right, question number two. Joel, this one's for you. The collaboration of which of these video game company and sneaker manufacturers has not yet taken place? What is it? Sega Gucci? Xbox Lacrosse? PlayStation and Nike, or Nintendo and Vans? I'm going to say Xbox. That's, that's, that, sound, that sounds like something that that doesn't seem like something I, I would I would have seen already. But, I mean, I, I can see uh, uh, Sega and Gucci doing something gaudy together, and Nike and Nintendo. Correct answer was Xbox. So we had um, Sega and Gucci. We had um, Nintendo and Vans, and then we had PlayStation and Nike. Did those PlayStation Nikes look fire? <laughs> oh my god! So before we get into question number three, I can confirm that Mario Mario has once again taken this week's point with Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter Two. Congratulations, Mario! Yeah. So Mario has not just been the first person to get two points. Mario has gone to three points. Nice, he wants yeah. that video game, guys. <laughs> nice job. Man. And he, wants, he wants it signed by Figsy, too. <laughs> you know how many pictures I figured out on that? I figured out the two at the end with the two. That's, a, that's, that's <laughs> so I freaking I got at it. it went peace at the end. <laughs> I saw Warfare. I, I thought it was like, I'm like, that's the one that the I'm like, but that's it. I just, two. Good job. All right, let's move on to question number three. Right. Joe, this one's for you. All right, let's do it. What game is this character from? Oh, my God. I don't freaking know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's adorable, though. Bro. What game is that from? Dude, I have no idea. Freaking. I, I don't know. Pass. No idea. Joe, uh, that's a uh, that's an iPad from the PS3. That is oh from God. the PS3's <laughs> iPad. And Chad have just informed me that um, Mario Mario wasn't actually the first person to get tonight's answer. It was the Collectionist. So I do apologize, but the Collectionist <laughs> makes the point. Well done, Collectionist. The rivalry started. Yeah. Well, Mario was the one who actually. Hey, it wasn't me, Figsy, so thanks, Mario. I didn't notice that. And I do apologize, guys. So Mario's got two points. 
And Collectionist takes his first point. Well done. And let's get a score update on tonight's quiz. So we have Joel in his first ever quiz. is off to a great start of three points. Joe is yet to get off the board. <laughs> Whatever, <else>, dude. <laughs> All right, question number four. I'm here to and look pretty, just... right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not smart or nothing. I got beginner's luck. <laughs> dude, no, you did. I thought you was good. You knew what that stupid little fuzzy thing was. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's actually, I think it's a sequel, too, because of the dead or... previously. The dead or alive thing, I feel like I could have possibly known that. There's no way I'm knowing what that little Furby looking thing is. <laughs> <laughs> all right question four joel this one's for you what superhero was a playable character in tony hawk's pro skater 2 would that have been spider-man it was spider-man this is rigged <laughs> <laughs> all right guys that's the end of round four and joe's just Joel's taking himself to four points. Now, this next round is going to be a new style of round. Just going to quickly get myself ready for it. We've never done this before, so hopefully this works. All right. So the way this is going to work is i'm going to read the question <laughs> um so i'm going to say a topic and i'm going to get you guys joe you'll go first to give me answers you'll each give me five answers joe you'll go one joe you'll go another joe you'll go one joe you'll go another so the question will be a video game question and there'll be lots of different answers however only a certain amount of them will be right five of them in fact And whoever can get the most answers wins the point. Uh, so, Joe, you'll be going first. So tonight's first question is, based on information from Wikipedia, what are the five best-selling games for the Xbox 360? Joe? For the 360? You just have to guess one, and you'll get five guesses all up. Halo 3. Not on the list. Joel? Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops. On the list, and it was number five. So Joel takes the first point, and Joe? GTA 4. Not on the list. Get the fuck out of here. How's that not on the list? I thought that would have been on the list. <laughs> How is that yep. not on the list? This is bullshit. All right, so I'm going to have to go one more and say GTA 5. GTA 5 was number two. This is rigged! <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually I actually was thinking about saying GTA 4, because I mean, GTA that one... G? Yeah, I know, that's tough with the cross-generational thing. You know? Yeah, so I actually did thought that 4, four was going to sell pretty good, because I mean, that's the one that most everybody uh, got on the, on the 360 mm -hmm. first. But, I mean, GTA 5 has sold like crazy. Yeah. It'll probably be a GTA 5 on the PS6 in a couple of years. All right, Joe, what's your third one? Mm. We haven't Xbox got number one yet. 360. Yeah, you know, um, you're not going to get it from me. Um, Gears of War. Do I have to be more specific than that? Yeah, you have to be more specific. Oh, God. This is where I'm going to get it wrong. Three. Not on the list, Joe. Yeah, I hate this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a, on a, on a curve and just say uh, Final Fantasy 13. Not on the list. All right, we've got GTA uh, Gears of War four. Also not on the list. I hate Joe? this. All right, let's see what, what came. Uh, oh, let's see. Wait, that's I'm going the wrong direction. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm have to look up at my wall, see where where I have my my no cheating, no cheating. Xbox games. I'm gonna <laughs> cheat. All right, I'm gonna say uh, Borderlands. It's not Borderlands, John. Madden. 
Twitch Madden. I don't fucking know. Anyone that came out in any of those years. This is the stupidest freaking shit, dude. Pick a year. I don't care. <laughs> no Maddens are on the list. And Joe? Oh All right. Let me let me look up again. Uh Final Fantasy 13. Not on the list. So Joel's takes two points from this round. The correct answers were in number one, Connect Adventures. God. Number two was Grand Theft Auto Five. Three was Minecraft Xbox 360. Four was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. And okay. then five was Call of Duty Black Ops. And then there was just more Call of Duties. <laughs> okay. Well, and I know uh, Minecraft sold like the Dickens too, because I mean, that's. That's also that people actually ask for that a lot when in in Mexico people when I put my my little garage sales yard sales up people always put on Facebook do you have Minecraft for the Xbox and I don't really get that game that much because it's still like a fifteen twenty dollar game even even used at GameStop Minecraft's one of my best selling games I always bread and, bread and butter seller for me. Well, right, let's, guys, let's see how long it lasts with, with the Xbox shutting down in a year or two. Question six not. is going to be very similar. Joel's going to go first this time. So how many points do I give Joel for that round? One or two? Uh, two. We'll give him two. Every, every one you get, we'll give you a point. Um, okay, so question six. I'm going to need, get you guys to name the five best-selling fighting games for the PS3, according to vgcharts.com Joel? Uh, so, me or, or Joe? You go first, Joel. Oh, me? Okay, I'm going to say uh, Tekken 6. Tekken 6 is number two. And Joe? Street Fighter 4. Street Fighter 4 is number one. Go. All right. Uh, Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. Not on the list. Jeff? Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, two. Not on the list. Should have said Go. three, man. Probably. Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Also not on the list. Why? <laughs> okay. Yeah. PS3, Soul Calibur 4? Not on the list. Our final guesses, Joe? All right, so I'm going to say uh, Dead or Alive 4. Not on the list. And Jack? Sona Four Ultimax. <laughs> Ooh, outside the box. Also not on the list. <laughs> Fucking no. So both players take one point. The answers we were looking for. Let me just pull this screen down. Number three was Mortal Kombat. Number four was Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, and number five was UFC two thousand and nine. That's really. The box, that one. Yeah, that's. I was looking more uh, like arcadey games, but I guess that one that one made it. Uh, we're going to score up that after that. Joel's powering ahead. He's tech got seven points, and Joe's grabbed a point there with one. Let's move on to the final round. Uh, thanks, Pavel. That was a fun new round, that one. All right. So, Joe, you're up. Our final round will be the pitcher round. So name the video game from the pitchers. Joe, this one's yours. What the heck is going on here? I don't know. It's something Australian, I'll bet. What's with all the blanks? Am I supposed to know what the dash white trademark is? Like, that's supposed to be something recognizable? I, I have this one. I had no idea, honestly. This yeah, is like that's... 400. <laughs> Pass. Yeah, Joe? That's... I don't know. I'm trying to figure this out too, but I am not getting a thing from here. Is this guy? Is this a? So this is a video game title, right? This is a video game title. Okay. 
Oh, hey, you, you stumped me there. I'm going to have to pass as well. So this is a tough one. So this was The Last of Us. Hmm. Oh, because everyone knows that off-white. That's so recognizable. That <laughs> literally just white text on a black background. It could be yeah. any word. It could have been any word in the English dictionary. There's nothing at all that gives you any indication what that is. I guess if you knew the first one and then off after the last something else, you'd be able to get yeah, it. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not that good well, who, with Who with the novels. hell has read The Last Cookie Club? Is that a, no, is that yeah. a very well-known novel? <laughs> has everyone here read The Last Cookie Club? Did it, it must be something popular in Australia. The last no, no, the, um, the That's quiz just was like made a by a picture of of the stuff. internet. <laughs> the last <laughs> cookie club. Oh yeah, that one. I'm just the quiz master. I don't make the questions. Don't you? <laughs> no, that would make an interesting cover. You put the the, la the last cookie, and then you have the picture of the Last of Us with them holding a cookie. <laughs> the last cookie. All right, final question, Joel. This one's for you. Name the video game from the title. So one of the Resident Evil viruses is here, the G or the T virus. We got some, I'm going to say, well, these are hookahs or bongs? Mm -mm. That's a bar. Those are taps. Oh, those are taps? Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to say, um, hmm. So we got. Oh, I, I got it. I'm not, I have no. I have no. I I don't get it. I'm gonna pass. Uh oh. What do you got, Jay? It's PUBG. It is PUBG. Joe gets it. <laughs> All right. That was a tough. That was some tough questions at the end. It is. I round. did great. <laughs> although, although I said I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one to to condone or, or deny people, but I mean, like they did, did look like like uh, glass bongs there. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not one for drugs, but I mean, it did look, it did look like that for a second. And his first appearance on the show, Joel's taken the win. Congratulations, Joel! Thank you. And Joel, you might be a um, challenger for AJ with that performance, so uh, we might have to get that arranged for the future. <laughs> And uh, well done to chat too. There was some tough questions in there. And um, yeah, if you guys like that new round, let us know in the comments. So, um, Joel, what have you um, brought on to show us today? I know you've got some goodies behind the desk there. Well, I said since well, I had this for a while, but you no, know, since we're talking about uh, the Dreamcast uh, anniversary, well, here's a, a Dreamcast to remember 9999. Nice. So, the console we the that got robbed it had so much potential i honestly i am like bitter about the dreamcast i love that thing and i yeah. think it, i thought it was better than the ps2 at the time i don't give a crap it was amazing when it came out the graphics were amazing it was i mean i remember a friend a friend of mine a friend of my brothers bought that and he invited us over, and then uh, the first game that I ever played on the on the Dreamcast was Soul Calibur, and I was just Hell like, it yeah. blew my mind to that see to come over, you know, with a friend and get amazing. some pizza and be uh, playing Soul Calibur with with those graphics. It was just amazing. That game still holds up and looks incredible. I've been playing it with my friend recently. I emulate that on my Steam Deck, and we've been playing Soul Calibur One from the Dreamcast, and it still looks absolutely amazing. So, sure, well, that was I, I have a. I have a VGA adapter for my Dreamcast, and and on VGA it, it looked great. Joe, I was gonna say, well, I agree with you. The, the Dreamcast was like a, a more powerful console than the PS2. Like if you go back to 2000, and you were gonna weigh up between buying the two, it's just the price difference, the fact that mm -hmm. PS2 played DVDs. You can see why. Oh, I get it. Killed the Dreamcast. Yeah. If if uh, if Sega could have held out one more year and find a manufacturer to give them a a, a DVD drive into their Dreamcast, that would have just changed the game. I, I do it's think just, that just, that annihilated them. It's, it's just, just that the, Sony had more connections and they could afford to take a hit on their PS2 by putting the the DVD player in it and selling at a loss. 
but Sega couldn't do that. Yeah. And then also so they, there was just a huge, um, the PS PlayStation one was very successful and the Saturn was not. So you had all, you know, think about all the people who wanted final fantasy 10, who wanted, you know, Gran Turismo three and four, who wanted all those, you know, sequels to the PlayStation one franchises that they were into and think of how many people had the Saturns. They were looking forward to like, what you know, Albert Odyssey too, you know, what the hell, you know, <laughs> this, this didn't have the, didn't have the I, library. I think, you know? I think also, I think also, uh, had there been a uh, Grand Theft Auto three on the Dreamcast, I think that would have that would have given it a little bit more life. That Grand weird. Theft Auto three, Grand Theft Auto three was was an amazing game on the PS two, and I'm pretty sure they could have fit that game on a Dreamcast disc, and that could have that could have given a bit more life to the to the Dreamcast. Yeah. Well, another thing that people don't mention is Sega aren't a manufacturing company of like. DVD players and like you know Sony DVD players where Sony like. are. Sony make this stuff, so it's easy for Sony to be like, "We'll just throw this product that we already make in another one of our products." You know, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure they were able to do it at a loss, where overall they're still making a profit at the end of the day. Where Dreamcast wouldn't even be able to, sorry, Sega wouldn't be able to consider putting the DVD player in the Dreamcast with it still making profits, etc. Definitely. Yeah, Sega needs to do something. I really would like them to either just sell everything they own or <laughs> come up with something or partner. But they, with but they have. I mean, they've been they've been sold or, or merged with other companies these past few years, but they really don't. I mean, all much. their IPs. Just sell some of their IPs. That's all. I mean, they have been, and there are some stuff being made, but I don't know. I'd like to see more. I'd like to see a new Virtua Fighter. I'd like to see some franchises come back. I'd like to see a new House of the Dead. Um, yeah. yeah, sure. I, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, the, I mean, they could, they could, uh, go the the limited gun, limited uh, run games. I mean, I know like one game I really liked on the Dreamcast that I think would make a a fun game on the Switch. I, I think they might have done it already, or they are planning on doing it. Uh, Cosmic Smash. I'm not, I'm not sure if you remember that, that game. No, that one's like a like a handball like a handball game that you're talking about. That like in like in in Europe they like handball. So you're you're it's kind of like res where you're like a a, yeah. a wireframe person and you're and you're rebounding a ball off the wall. So it, ha it has those visuals that was interesting for the Dreamcast, but they never it never came out in the U.S. But I can see that as a Switch game or maybe as a download game if they ever do a PS5 VR game on it. That would be fun, like bringing old games to new platforms, but bringing them in VR and different things like that. It's, it, it's still like it would be a completely new experience, you know, where it's not just porting an old game. So I, you know what I thought would be, I want, I'd like to have uh, some like old dungeon crawlers ported over. Like, I think that would be like, like the old Might and Magic games and stuff like that. Those linear base games that are all like, you know, walking through tunnels and you have like, you know, turn-based combat and stuff. I thought those would be cool in VR. You'd be like in the dungeon, looking around and having the monsters in front of you. You know, just soup them up a little bit. That'd be kind of fun. Even yeah. a game like Theme Park World on VR would be cool because there's a mode where you can mm -hmm. play in your park. That would be awesome in VR. <laughs> Riding your roller coasters that you made and different mm -hmm. things like that. So they have a roller coaster tycoon game for VR, but I've never played it. I have no, I have no idea if it's any good, but that might be fun. But also, that to me, that just sounds like a recipe for mode. like I'm going to be puking in a bucket. I don't know if I want to sit there in a roller coaster simulator. <laughs> Another game that would be cool to see like that. I mean, not not to like go into like tragedies and all that, but uh, a Titanic game where you can actually like be in the submersible and actually be like seeing the the the, the whole VR motion going around the ship. I know, I know there's been uh, lots of pictures taken in the past of the Titanic before the the accident that happened a couple months ago, but I'm pretty sure, well, now it probably won't happen now with the tragedy of the people that died, but it would have been interesting to see a VR game where you can actually like be in the submersible and you can actually like mm -hmm. drive around the wreckage of the Titanic and just looking at how that would look like from, from the perspective. Even from the other perspective, a VR game, and this might be bad touch, but a VR game where you're actually on the Titanic when it hits the iceberg and you're going through that experience, that would be really interesting, right? 
That'd be yeah. terrifying. You could start as like different classes on the boat and try and survive and different things like that. It sounds sounds interesting, you know, like when the boat's fully like vertical in the water and different things like that. So they have, uh, yeah. do you know that quantum, I think it's Quantic Dreams or whatever, the people that made that Detroit, Detroit Becomes Human and um, Heavy Rain, you know that company? Yep. So they just, they just came out with a new game called Under the Sea, I think it's called, or Under the Waves or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't remember the exact name. I think it's Under the Waves, but it's a, it's like a story-based experience where it's you're in a submersible and you're underwater and you're doing stuff like that. So it's not exactly what you're talking about and it's not in VR, but if you do want like a cool game like that, that would check that out because it does look really good. And those that company makes quality uh, titles if you like those story-driven experiences, which I really do like games like that. So. Hey, Joel, I wanted to ask you what games you've been playing and what are you playing at the moment? Well, right now... Uh... I'm playing uh, the Advance Wars on the Switch, oh, nice. and I got I just recently purchased. Uh, well, I've been playing a lot of Switch lately, so I've also uh, got Rhapsody, which are the it's like an old style uh, musical RPGs, kind of simplistic but still kind of fun. They're, they're the originals uh, series that it was based on. So those are, uh, it's a compilation. It's got uh, two games on it, on one cartridge. One's a PS1 game that, and one's a PS2 game that were previously in, in Japanese, but now they got an English release. And what else? Uh, well, that's pretty much it. I mean, I haven't had a chance to play to play much. So uh, my PS4 is here in, in Mexico. And I take my switch with me when I go work in the U.S. So, so like I said, I go back and forth. I'll spend uh, like four or five days in the United States and another two days here in Mexico. So I haven't really had a chance to to take to play my PS4, which I, I do want to. But I'm gonna try to see if maybe uh, by this holiday I'll, I'll buy myself a, a PS5, which I've, I've been eyeballing it lately. Especially when the other day I found some a cheap hard drive for to put on the PS5, so that's oh, just man. getting me one step closer to to getting a PS5, and I'll try keep that one at my other apartment where I'm staying at in the U.S. and I'll just keep the hmm. PS4 here in Mexico. PS5s are definitely becoming cheaper and more readily available, so people yeah, they're this, finally this, gone on sale. For the first yeah, time. this year, yeah, this year I've seen it, I've seen uh, more of them, but last year it was pretty it's pretty scarce, and especially the year before. Mm -hmm. Alebilly in VR. That's a funny uh, Dreamcast game. If anyone's played that, <laughs> she's talking about this really weird, creepy, like horror adventure type game. Joel, do you keep your entire collection with you in Mexico? Or do you have stuff in California as well? Uh, my most of my collection is here in Mexico right now. Over there in in my other apartment where I stay at, I got a bunch of Switch games, and I have uh, an Xbox 360 over there, and I have couple of games there but it's a little apartment so i can't really cram it like i have it here in, in my house here in, in mexico but i i have i said I, ha I have over there in my apartment i have my vita i have my switch and i have a, a 3ds and usually uh when i take uh my mom to a doctor's appointment i i, gra I grab my my game boy micro so that, that kind of seemed a little little retro there but i mean i was having fun with it it's cool it's nice you're really into handhelds huh yeah late lately yes yeah i've been obsessed with handhelds lately too i went on a little binge of 3ds and psp and yeah i mean every everybody right now is on the 3ds uh uh binge because once it once it got announced that the 3ds uh was was finally you know kaput they everybody just wanted to get a 3ds and they kind of shot the price up on them and but I mean, the good thing about that is it, it might have shut off the price of the of the physical games, but it's going to still be cheap enough and free to hack your 3ds and super easy download them all. I, I tell everybody like, um, you know, if you, even if you're not interested in collecting for the 3ds, you should probably pick up a console now and mod it and just get up all the games so you have them because. Like I've, I've said this before in the past, you can emulate the games and they look good and everything like that, but if you actually like care about the 3D. I don't see how that's going to be emulated, you know, unless you get some 3D monitor. I don't know how the hell that's going to work in the future. No, that was just more more of a gimmick. I mean, I never, mm -hmm. I hardly ever use 3D on my 3DS. So just a couple so of I, times 
just to I see do. what it looks like. I love the 3D. Like, I love it when I'm playing, like, Mario Kart and, and, like, a lot of those games. I think it's really cool. It's not necessary for some games, but for me, I thought that it was, like, an actual feature I, I enjoy. Yeah, no, it actually was better with the new 3DS, but I remember in the in the original 3DS. That sucks the, with the original. Yeah, and at least the newer one has that, that eyeball tracking thing where it can mm -hmm. at least, you know, stay consistent. Yeah, I... I um. I do remember I, I my original 3DS that I did not use the 3D very often because it would always fall out and you'd, you'd have to like reorient. It would just mess with you. But the new one works a lot better. So I use it a lot now. I've honestly rarely played 3DS at all. It's, I've probably got less than like 10 hours into the 3DS. It's a system that I've bought the systems and the games I want to play, but I just haven't played them yet. So it's like so many games, so little time. And it's like yeah. the games I want to play are RPGs or JRPGs. Or they're not like mm -hmm. games that you can play in five minutes. Mm -mm. But if you can if you can find them cheap, grab them because those always maintain their price. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you've heard, but I heard Pokemon games get really expensive. So you may want to pick a few of those up now if you are interested in them because... I'm picking up every Pokemon game I see, dude, and I'm just keeping them all. Like I'm gonna have like stacks of just sun. You'll you'll be it'll be easier to find the 3DS games than the yeah. than the original uh, oh. DS and Game Boy Advance games. Of course, especially boxed. And stuff. They'll still be expensive, but there's there's they're more. They seem to be more. They're not going to be more available on the 3DS, like Emerald and stuff. Like if that's what you mean, but uh, yeah. yeah. And again, like Pokemon Black and White too are already like in Australia, they're two hundred and fifty dollars games. It's crazy no it's so it's it, pokemon collectors are voracious and they literally the tagline of the show is to collect everything oh, in the no. franchise so you know that's just the it will always sell like i i'm, I'm not worried about uh, it looks it. like we lost them maybe i lost myself too no, we can still still hear you. Can you hear us buddy nope let's well, see so now malfunction or something. Do you want to get into some um, show and tell, Joe? Hell yeah, let's do it. You want to go first today? Yeah, come on, yeah, let's do it. Are we doing the funny picture? No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we did a better picture, man. So I'm losing you guys. It's all right, man. Just give it a minute. It'll come back. All right, so um, Amazon had like they they run promotions all the time, and they had like a buy one get one free, basically buy two for the price of one. And so I grabbed this. It was nineteen ninety nine, and I got so I grabbed this. I've been meaning to pick this up for a while. It's the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Battle Royale R, um, or All Star Battle R. Excuse me. So like I said, I don't know. Recently, I've just um, I've been having lots of fun playing Soul Calibur with my friends. So I started playing a lot of Tekken and stuff again. And I don't know. I just kind of had the fighting game bug bite me, and um, I figured I'm going to pick up some some of the fighting games for PS4 that I want. So I grabbed this one. It's the first one I grabbed. And then uh, second game I got with it was Astro Knight on PS4. I don't know if you're familiar with that game. It's like a little 2D action platformer type game. No, it's a really good game. It's a good game. Um, and uh, so basically, I got it for nine ninety nine a piece. Can't go wrong. Please, yeah, with that purchase. Just for a JoJo's game that used to be like a hundred dollars on the PS3. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And, and, and so, yeah, and there's there's another JoJo's game I think too, but it's not a fighting game. I think it's like a uh, Heaven's All Night or something like that. Yeah, I saw. It, I don't know. I'd have to do more research. Well, I thought it was a fighting game. Or... Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. When I looked at the the back, I didn't watch any videos or anything, but. I don't know. What am I doing? I have played that game you just showed, and it is a heap of fun. Ah, sure. Um, hey, welcome, welcome back. back. And then uh, the next thing I picked up is uh, Ghost Song. Ooh, Humble that looks One cool. eye. Um, yeah. So it is. I don't know if you can see the artwork very well, but it's it's a two D Metroidvania type esque game. Um heavily inspired by super metroid specifically so like the art style i mean it doesn't look quite like that but i guess like the mechanics like the way the character moves and then runs and stuff like that I, it, it looks very similar to super metroid so if you like the feel of that game i'm always down for um, those types of games 
I love these games. I know a lot of people say they're sick of these little like Metroidvania 2D action games, but I can't get enough of them. I freaking love them and I'll take them all day. I love those types of experience. Well, they're usually really reasonably long. That's what I love about these games. They're fun, but they don't overstay their welcome. Usually like, I mean, you know, like 20, 30 hours, you unlock everything you can, you can move on with your day. And then there'll be like, you know, a few unlockables you can go back and do if you want or something. Yeah, an, e- an easy way to, for them to, to get more hours out of you is just to backtrack. So that's kind of the major letdown yep. of those types of games. Yes, and then as always, for me, as always, this, this, I, inevitably in every one of those games, at some point I get stuck. Always I go, where am I going? Where am I supposed to go? What do I, oh, I got these magic blue shoes, but what do I do with the blue shoes? I don't remember. What do I need these stupid things? And I spend like an hour trying to figure out what to do. So that always happens, and I get frustrated. But that's also because I take breaks. So I'll play a game, and I'll put it down, and I'll play something else for two weeks, and then I go back to my game, and I'm like, I have to start this whole game over. I have no (laughs) idea what I was doing or where I'm going or what I'm – oh, man, I get – this happens to me all the time. I get so – There's certain games that have, like, learning curves that, like, Mm -hmm. will have weird abilities that are unique to that game, and you learn how to use it, and – Mm-hmm. But then once you like get back into it, it's like, oh god, this, oh god, I don't even remember what to do with this and not that. And I'm imagining like going back to Tears of the Kingdom and struggling to like remember all the different moves that I've learned. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, exactly. So you'll in like a few years you'll go back and be like, How do I build anything? Yeah. I don't remember. It's just I'll, like, I'll be in combat and I'll be like, why am I struggling? I'm, oh, that's because I've got all these abilities that I forgot how to use. Maybe it's uh, for younger people that can memorize those things quicker. Maybe we're just getting old. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that could be it. Facts hurt. So this one, um, I mean, you shouldn't be surprised about this. I mean, I'm the fucking evil dead hat. I got evil dead stuff. All over. So, I mean, I, I have the, I have this game on the, I bought the PS five collector's edition, um, but I didn't have this on PS four. So dude, blasphemous is amazing. Radio Transit. I can't wait to get blasphemous too. I just, uh, I, I would have gotten it now, but I just already have a crazy back. Well, let's, let's hope they, they market it better and they make more copies. Cause I know, I know a lot of people liked it in lots of countries. I know it was very, uh, popular Latin America for Blasphemous because of the studio that made it. Mm-hmm. Dude, it's a I'm great already game. disappointed with Blasphemous too because they announced that they're not going to make a physical copy for Australia. Really? Uh oh. Yeah. Let's so, get a filthy American copy. Well, I probably just won't play it now because it's like, do I want to pay thirty dollars to import this game? It's just like, yes, it's a good no. game. <laughs> they're they're hard as hell, but they're they're fun. It's good. Anyway, this was like. On sale for like literally seven dollars, I think I got this for. Nice. So hell yeah! So this is what I mean. So I, this is this. So if you like, if you're into collecting PS4, it's the time to strike, guys. Like you can find so many deals on clearance and on cheap. Like I'm, I'm, sp- I'm I haven't spent more like twenty bucks on a game forever. Uh, just wait for the holidays. I'm pretty sure there'll be lots of games on sale. Oh yeah. For Black Friday. Oh yeah. So I probably spend more on this one because it's like a game that you couldn't, it's hard to find in the store. So the new Trine just came out. So I went out and grabbed this because I do want, like, I've never played these games ever, but uh, me and my girlfriend were watching like a streamer who was playing the new Trine and uh, it looked really fun. And like, it's like right up our alley. So it's like an action, it's like a 2D puzzle game kind of where you control like multiple characters and they all have different abilities. And you have, have you, have you opened it already? Yeah, it's open. Yeah, because I know the I have that on the Switch, and it's uh, codes. Oh, really? That's yeah. The, the Switch version has no. one one game, and the and the other two are are download codes. Um, I game? don't think so. So this code well, is for a those, physical those should be all on the disc. Because I mean, okay, good. Yeah. Switch, Switch games usually they only have a certain size, but that game that game was like clearance for the Switch, or I find that clearance mm-hmm. here in my area. Like about a year or two ago, it's got a code and for a digital art book, but I feel like that game will be one to pick up for the future. Definitely that version. Yeah, it's got the, all four games on it, and comes with this cool little map. But I'm not gonna take it all up because I can't fold maps. <laughs> 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 for yeah, because Try and Four got a PS4 release, and then they released Try and Four on that pack. Yes, which, which is funny because like, like I that's exactly when I looked up. Like Try and Four was like. 20 bucks and this was like 21 
<laughs> I was like, all right, I'm going to go for the one with all the games. <laughs> That's a no-brainer. And then, um, all right, so I do got I have two, to me, very exciting pickups for me because I am, like, into, you know, the VR collecting. I don't know if you guys know that. I have, like, a full VR set. I'm only missing, like, a couple variants, but I have, like, every physical game. And I've got you have Job point... Simulator? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that one's been tough to find. I got them all. Or I just don't have all the weird variants. Like, apparently, there's, like, four or five variants of Job Simulator, uh, which oh, really? I, I guess, apparently, there's, like, a whole bunch of whatever. I don't know. Like, misprints and shit. I don't know. But I'm not into all that. I just want the, the I want like the regular copies and like alternate artworks. I'm not into misprints and stuff. I don't care in particular. But anyway, there are things I'm collecting. So there are three um, aim controller bundles, and um, there's the far firewall one, the Farpoint one, and the Bravo team one. And the Bravo team one is like impossible to find, but I finally found one. So I finally got the Bravo team bundle one. Ooh. And uh, Sorry, Ray, man. it's not the greatest condition. Like, I don't know. I can't. It's got like a little like wear on the box right in the corners. I, I've seen I've seen those games, but usually they just go under my radar because I think to myself, like, if the box is big. Where am I going to mm -hmm. put it? And usually, like, I think to myself, I'll eventually find those guns at the flea market. But when you find them like that complete, I mean, that, that's mm -hmm. a good thing to show off in your collection. Yes. So. Uh, I have all three of the ERB ones. Uh, I wanted all of these ones. And they also all come with a not-for-resale version of the game. So if you are like a variant collector and you want like all the variants, they're in these. So anyway, this one is particularly difficult to find. Uh, at least it was for me. Maybe it's easy where you live, but like on eBay, there's only been one listing for this thing for the last few years, and it's like 200 bucks. And I'm not spending $200 on it. I got this for like 50 bucks. So I'm pretty freaking happy to have it in my collection. So that's the I've sold the gun for more than 50 bucks before. So you got a really good deal. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. I'm very pleased. Like, like it was one of those things where like I have like an alert on eBay and it doesn't even go off because it's just never for sale, dude. It's like not for sale ever. And I saw Bravo Team VR aim and I looked and there was one on there and I literally like it was just like couldn't hit buy now fast. <laughs> I, I don't even care what the condition is. You, you heard you that, heard the angels singing. It's that hard. Yeah, it is for PS4. It's for PSVR, yeah. PSVR one. Yeah, it's you just are, it's so now that you've got it, they're gonna pop up everywhere. Of course. Now and they'll be 20 bucks and they'll be brand new sealed and uh, like the same guy watch this and be like I got a box of those and you know whatever. Hey if you got them you know, put them out there. I'll buy a nicer condition one. I'm no problem with that. Um, so the second thing is another really hard to find PSVR item. Um, so this thing, like it's, it was only released in PAL territories. And normally I, I only see them on eBay for like 250 bucks. Although recently I've just seen a whole bunch of these pop up for like 120 to 150 and I think I know why, because I bought this one. Um, but anyway, here it is. It's the Iron Man VR motion controller bundle. Um, this thing is just impossible to find. Again, the condition I'm not really pleased with. This was supposed to be new. I was going to say, weren't they brand new? It was supposed <laughs> to be new, and it literally showed up with a sticker that said used like new. It's so, you know, but like I said, either way, this thing is so flipping hard to find I'm, I'm still happy to have it in my collection but with the one thing that pisses me off and the thing that i, re I realized why because i got this for way cheaper this is only like 90 bucks or something like that um but uh if you look it's like the middle eastern pal version okay yeah so it's got like it has like just like arabic text on it is that instead a of saying it is it's, 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 it's probably a from from united arab emirates so usually their uae is is what they yeah the most, most popular area where those games are from and then if you look instead of it saying just playstation vr required it has that gosh i don't even know what that word is all right whatever this is this right here see that yeah. all right whatever that's that's not the normal pal version so Super happy to have it in my collection. I still got a great deal on it. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to have it. I'm still not satisfied because I want 
the regular UK one that just says PlayStation VR required. And I would like it in a little bit better condition than this. Look at that. So it's, it's not awful. And like I said, just for how rare it is, I'm still really happy to have it. But this was supposed to be new and uh, clearly not. Thanks, clearly TJ. Not. But either way, like I said, uh, extremely, extremely happy to have it in the collection just because it's it, and it is insanely rare. And like no matter what, I did well on this. If I decide to sell this tomorrow on eBay, I'll double my money from it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm okay with it. You know, it's always better to own it and want to upgrade it than not exactly, own it. exactly. Just because it's like you, it's so. <clears throat> I would rather keep this because now what I can do is I got a good deal on this one, and if I spend the money on the nice one, I can sell this one and recoup most of my costs and flip it, and you know it won't be so bad if that makes sense. But either way, like I said. The, both of these items I've been looking for for like fucking years, dude. And I got them both in like a matter of 15 minutes. Like it was crazy. Like I found the Bravo controller. Are you, I told you in the chat, you were there fixing it. I was like, oh my God, I just got that Bravo controller. And then like 10 minutes later, I'm like, oh my God, I just got the okay. Iron Man thing. No, you <laughs> lost it even more. You just started spamming. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, dude, I do. Well, I couldn't, I just never see them. Man. You know what I mean? Like, I'm you just did not you for sale. Them now because you, you were going to buy both of them that were all there. I should have bought all of them and just kept the best condition one and sold all the other ones. That's really what I should have done. But they were kind of expensive, and I don't know. It is what well, it good is. Thing you, good thing you got it now, because if you got it like in November or December, you would have probably paid more because you get more competition during the holidays. Yeah, and no, I don't think those will last very long. Like you said, these things, they're, they're just so rare. Like, I don't know. I, 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 you know, I, I, I foresee them selling them up, selling out them. They were on Walmart, in case anybody was curious. That's where I got it. It was on Walmart's website. Some dude in Texas had them. So it was like a third-party seller through Walmart's website or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's all my pickups. That's all I got. I haven't any pickups this week. But what I did was I went through my like um, limited run type game shelf and just pulled out some really cool stuff. So why not? So we're going to start with one that I played. So here we have an open copy of Firewatch. I absolutely love this game. If you haven't played this and you don't want to pay like 200 bucks for it, download the digital version because this is a really fun walking simulator. It doesn't sound fun, but it's the best walking simulator I've ever played. Uh, really, really fun game. You, um, you're in a national park and you talk to the park rangers on walkie-talkies. and yeah, I won't give it away, but it's a really good game. I think Limited Run put out 5,000 of them, but unfortunately it's pretty pricey now. And the reason I opened it in the first place is because I got a heat shrink seal and I don't like them. I wanted a white seal, so that's why I opened it. It's also got like um, manuals, greeting cards. It's got a map, which you don't see with PS4 games. You just usually have no manual at all. Which is I don't even see that game open, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> and open. I'm going to show you another open limited run game, actually. This is open, isn't it? Yeah. I played this one too. Shocking, I played my limited run games. Yeah, I've yeah. opened most of mine too. So this I is have, the first have... limited run game I ever got, actually. I know I bought this in Pink Gorilla in Seattle, and that got me into PS4 limited run games. Oh, play. nice. So this is Octodad Deadliest Catch. It's actually really fun. You play as an octopus who's pre pretending to be a dad, and you're an octopus, and you have to like still do dad things but with tentacles and you control it's like the a physics similar right where you're all yeah, you like control the tentacles with l1 l2 r l l1 and r2 it's it's really fun and again you get a thick manual you get the game it's got awesome artwork i know this game came with a tie too but i didn't get the tie unfortunately but yeah this is heaps of fun yeah expensive game. limited run used to put out fun games <laughs> is that an expensive game no um i I wouldn't say so. I don't think okay. so. Uh, next it's one's been on pretty... sale a lot too. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a cheaper one. Uh, next one's um, this version's pretty expensive. You can get other versions that are cheaper. And this is what remains of Edith Finch. Now, this is the first print through I am 8 bit. Again, it's a walking type simulator like um, Firewatch. Um, I haven't actually played this one, but I've only heard really good things about it it's set in washington state looks really cool 
Uh, I won't open this one because it's like a two hundred dollar game. I'll, if I want to mm. play it, I'll get the digital version one. But no, it's nice to have this one in the collection. Yeah, I think so. There's a couple. So there's a couple games. Uh, Anna Perna put that out, and um, they also put out Kentucky Route Zero, Outer Wilds, and um, Gorgoragora, like Goragoa. I think it's called. I can't say the name of it. They're all like insanely good, and they're all in that Annapurna collection. Are you familiar with that? Oh, like, yeah, that the big eight set? pack collection. I know the one you're talking about. That's yeah. expensive now. It's like four hundred bucks now. So I. I really would love to get that because it comes with all of the discs and cases, the original one, but they have like a cheaper one for like 200. That's like a box set, but it just comes with the discs inside of sleeves inside of like a box set. You don't get all the cases and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's still nice though. And you can get them cheaper. Yeah. So I've been on the fence. Like I, what do I buy? Cause I want Edith Finch. I want that game. But do I buy the $250 one? Do I buy the $400 box? Do I buy the $200 box? It's like, oh my look, gosh, I don't know. I'll we'll just probably wait for it to be reprinted again. Yeah, exactly. Or, or Prius 5 copy will come out and it'll be 20 bucks or something. So now, the I final game I'm going to show is actually really interesting. It's the only limited, or well, maybe one of only two or three limited run games that I'd actually played before I bought it. I owned the digital copy. And it was a game that I'm like, Please release this game. Please release this game. And that is Salt and Sanctuary. Yeah. This is a, like a Dark Souls, two, like Castlevania Styles Dark Souls-y game. It's really fun. Yeah, that uh, one's also on the Switch too, so they, they gave people options. It's on the Vita as well, I believe. Yeah, this is the one game that mm -hmm. um, Scott, um, Scott Pilgrim was the same. But like when Limited Run announced that, I, I was genuinely excited. It's like finally they're bringing out the game I wanted them to do. Uh, there's a, um, there's this a sequel now too. I think. I think there's really? another one. I'm pretty sure there's a new. Ver there's a sequel to that now. Oh, I Salt and know. Sacrifice, I think it's called, or something like that. I think. I'm pretty sure there's a sequel. Um, that game is hard as balls. I have that game as well, and I remember rewarding, playing. but it's not like I not like artificially hard. It's just no, you gotta get good. <laughs> it, so it was one of the first games I got that, like, it it is unapologetically hard. Like, it's not like it's not like there's no babying you. Like, you have to learn the moves, and you have to learn how to counter, and, and you have to learn how to fight. And it's just, you can't screw, you can't just button mash. You cannot do that. You'll lose. So I just remember like being shocked at how much effort I had to put into it. It's just like it's a little 2D action game and I'm sweating over here. What is happening? This is so hard. <laughs> but now I'm used to it. It's not so bad. Like I said, I'm tons of games like that. So. Joe, what have you got to show us today? Well, I let me see. Well, have you ever guys uh, seen the the versions of Final Fantasy that have the silver disc? The ones that came out a couple of years ago? Yeah, I have one of those. Final Fantasy VII? Yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of those. Yeah, I'm aware of the reprinted ones of the different colors. Yeah. So, right here I got uh, one of the greatest uh, hits, uh, Final Fantasy uh, IX. This is one of the silver discs. And then, let's see, right here I have uh, the regular version. So, uh, some of these, uh, you've seen them, you'll see them around. Because they came out a couple of years ago, and Square Enix was probably the last publishers of Silver Disc PS1 games. But sometimes you just got to look at the at the logo. So some say uh, SquareSoft, and some say Square Enix. So some of the later uh, greatest hits on these PS1 games, you can't you have to look at the clues to open them, not open them up. Because I know people are, are going to try to keep them sealed. But when you find these, it's uh, Final Fantasies, it's a Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, I mean. And a lot of these are silver discs because they're the last ones that came out from the Square Enix store. So mm -hmm. sometimes people sell them real cheap for like 20, 30 bucks. But you just got to uh, look at the clues and ask them because sometimes people open them and they'll think, oh, they must be uh, uh, fake copies because they're silver discs or, or, they or they're the... They're not originals, but they are originals because they came from Square Enix. So mm -hmm. I'm always uh, telling people, you know, when you buy these, I mean, if you're going to pay 20, 30 bucks for them, I mean, that's the same price as they were back in the day. 
so you can actually uh, find the the variants that have silver uh, silver bottoms to them. So it's always good to know your options, or if you're a Final Fantasy fan, then you'll find uh, that there's variants out there. And there still are. <laughs> like there's there's also uh, like errors on some of the discs or or something like that. But it's always fun to to have uh, you know options. <laughs> And if you do want them, I believe you can still go to Square Enix's website and buy them brand new. Awesome. Yeah, that too. Or if you don't even have a PS1 anymore, you can always uh, buy them on the Switch. I mean, that that copy of those copies of Final Fantasy on the Switch are still pretty cheap too. On the Switch. Yeah, Salt and Sacrifice is an action role playing game that was released in May 2022. Oh. Oh, I'll have to check that one out. Thanks, Joe. What else have we got first, Joe? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, we we started talking before the podcast started, and I get a chance to to grab a few things. So let me see what else I got. Hmm. Huh. You want anything uh, lately, or just something random from my from my collection? Oh, anything, man. Whatever you want. Anything, to grab, man. anything you want to flex on us, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> flex, flex, flex. All right, let me. Radio right Rancid said finding the square soft on PS2 is even harder to find. All right. Here's something I got a couple of years ago, and I know it's been. Uh, I'm not sure it's hard to find, but it is and it isn't. But uh, this one is a uh, summon night for the. Let me see. This one is the box that it came in the mail when I got Summon Night on the PSP and 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 the Vita. Yeah. Well, I mean, Summon Night. Well, so Summon Night Five actually. Nice. So I remember uh, when I when I ordered this from them, it was Summon Night Five, and I still have it sealed because they ended up giving me the code for the PSP, and I just put it on my Vita. But this one came in a special box, which. Uh, I'm a little sad because my own post office or when they sent it to me in the mail, they just slapped a sticker on top of it. And right here I have my, my PO, my PO box number in, in, in Calexico where I get my, where I get my mail. And then a couple of years later, they were, they were offering the boxes, but I never got a chance to buy the box. I, I kind of tried to, to wipe this off, but it's, it's, a, it's on permanent marker. So the, the, the address here. It's, it's still stuck on the box. I managed to peel off the UPS sticker that was on top of this because there's a big old white UPS sticker here on this, and I managed to peel it off carefully, but I never got the chance to to take off my, my PO box number. But if you guys have ever seen the, the box, even the box was crafted nicely. It's got uh, lots of pictures on it, and I said it came with the, with the soundtrack. So this is uh, Summon Night 5, which... It didn't really come. Uh, it came. It came out at the end of the PSP's uh, life cycle. Like I said I, I downloaded it for the PSP and I just jumped it over to the Vita and I never, I never bothered to open this. And you know the Summon Night. Uh, I have it in my collection. Summon Night Six on the. It came also on the on the Vita and the PS4. And Summon Night Six I think has like one of the thickest uh, manuals ever on a PS4 game. Have you ever, ever seen the manual? Well, I don't believe I have. But I was gonna say that was that the game that you had to buy it for a Kickstarter, or you had to. Yeah, no, that's Kickstarter. one of the that's one of the few games that I've actually I actually did a Kickstarter for. I hardly ever do that, but I I liked I like this series because it it's actually like on the Game Boy Advance and on other systems. But I really like the Game Boy Advance games, and I liked it on the. On the Vita, uh, on the on the PSP, also. So th they're they're fun RPGs, and like I said, RPGs usually uh, hold their hold their uh, value. So I thought to myself, you know, the the PSP was was dying down, and I like the PSP. I have a bunch of RPGs on the on the PSP, and so any one of these would be on a no. Such good system. Retro was Definitely. saying the hairspray might take the ink off. Oh yeah, and I have to try, but I mean this that this thing's already like wow, like four or five years old now, so I don't know if the I have to give it a try. And TJ was saying that you should show us your googly eyes. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh that's something I also do. I mean if, if well I guess if you later on you put my, my Instagram, I 
And actually, I have it on Tumblr. I mean, I, I've, I've been doing it for years, and a lot of my friends have seen all the crazy stuff that I've done. But I usually put, like, on top of the on top of a game, I put wiggly eyes on them, and I take a picture of it. So I've been doing that for, like, oh, like, like seven, eight years now on those. What's your Instagram so I, page, Joe? Uh, it's a Googly Joe on, on Instagram. And on Tumblr... Oh crap! On Tumblr, it's an old, it's another uh, nickname. That's not like a nickname, but this is my. I did it for fun. I have my one of my old uh, uh, emails has, has has is the name of the website for for my Tumblr. But I think back in the day, I was like debating to myself: Should I make a? This was like seven, eight years ago. Do I make a Tumblr or do I make a an Instagram? Mm -hmm. But I had an old phone, I had an old phone years ago, and it had no space on it, so. The the Tumblr app was smaller than than Instagram, so I ended up just doing a a Tumblr. But about a couple years ago, I just I had I had a new phone and I and I did an Instagram. And so good. <laughs> yeah, so I'm debating. I, I have them on file somewhere, but I need to go to my old laptops and some old uh, SD cards that I have. But I have like. Like four or five years of, of, of old so uh, googly eyes on funny, on dude. all my video games, but I've this is I have like almost six thousand games. Um, there's been plenty of of um, of games that can that, that I can do that, but the, but my Instagram doesn't have that many. My my Tumblr had a whole bunch <laughs> the dark that, one that, I, that I did years ago. Up. But scroll back up. We'll but I, I need I needed to just uh, <laughs> jump them. Over. Usually, I gotta get my, I gotta get the laptop that I'm using right now. Hey, those that is what this laptop that, that I'm using right now, and just uh, re-upload them <laughs> and, and put all my old Tumblr photos on Instagram. That's so good. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that that was a thing I did a couple years ago for fun, and I just kept doing it. I usually do like I used to do like like ten. 10 of them, fifteen of them a month, but then I slowed down because if I I, I even though I have six thousand games, not not all games oh are are easy to put those little wiggly eyes on. So usually I just do like <laughs> like eight or ten now in a month instead of doing like fifteen or twenty back in the day. I think I'm gonna steal your idea, but I'm gonna put. Dip but yeah, I mean, if you if you like the, if you like just stupid uh, random stuff like that, I ha I have my Instagram, and I'll see if I can uh, <laughs> send you my Tumblr link later, and you can just uh, put that up on on. On this or or no, should have been the whole the show, by the way, Figsy. We should have just sat here and looked at. But yeah, I've been, I've been doing those for years now. <laughs> oh, this is so good. <laughs> so, so do you, Joel, do you mind if I steal your idea and then uh, just I'm gonna put nipples on everybody though. That's what I'm gonna do. Same thing. Just put giant nipples on all the characters. <laughs> that looks so good. <laughs> It's so intense with them pointing at you like that. <laughs> Different size to the people. Oh, my God. oh, I feel bad for the people who can't see. Uh, it is it is. <laughs> so basically, it's game covers, guys, but they all have googly eyes, and it's really funny. Welcome back. All right, I'm back. I, I guess my funny pictures broke the internet. My yeah, head hurts from laughing so hard. <laughs> Yeah, some quality stuff, man. I like what you're doing. You it is, it is. Keep, keep no, I really doing. appreciate not just that, but your posts on Facebook. Um, if you guys don't know, Joel was one of the first, I believe, the first member of the PS3 Collectors Group. And he's also been one of the most active members. I mean, a lot of Facebook groups with Joel. And Joel posts in Facebook almost every day. He's always active on there. He's always positive. It's if there were more people out there like Joel, Facebook would be a better place, and that's saying something. Thank you. Yeah, I usually, I usually just I, I I put stuff that I would like, and I know I mean I don't know maybe maybe this uh podcast here will get me more fans, but I'm always happy to show off the things that I find, and if you like the funny stuff that I that I make, you know, just have a look and and laugh and share them. I mean, that's that's what they're there for. I haven't put watermarks on them, but I mean, most I'm, I think if anybody tries to steal my stuff, I'll, I'll know right away. Yeah, but it'd be you're inspiring someone else, you know. <laughs> Everyone yeah. knows who started the googly eyes because you've been doing it for a long time. Definitely. I've never seen anyone else do it. Yeah. So, all right. 
Anything else you want to talk about, or do you have other questions for me? Since the topic was about about uh, collecting in Mexico, I can probably still throw out a few. I think we just covered everything. Joe, um, Joe, do you have any further questions? Or does anyone in chat have any further questions to ask Joe before we go? Oh, my only question is that I, you know, are there any like regional exclusives or anything in particular that um, people should look out for that are only available in Mexico or Brazil or anything like that? Any knowledge in well, that regards? I'm not too familiar with Brazil, but I mean, most of the uh, the very uh, popular Mexican uh, video games have already been out there, like El Chavo Card, and there's one called Atrévete a Soñar, which is a Wii game that uh, came with the microphone, I believe. It's and there's a few out there that are in Spanish, but I think those are those are pretty uh, pretty common games. We just got to look for them. They still they still have the same. They think that, I think they still have the same UPC number, but they just changed the label a little bit, and it'll say in Espanol under, under it. But it's usually like sports games, that, mm -hmm. that few few uh, EA games that are in Spanish. But but the most the most uh, familiar one to a lot of people uh, on the P, especially for PS3 collectors, is uh, Chavo Kart. Mm -hmm. So that one. Uh, here with me and on the border with Mexico, I've only seen it randomly, like like rarely. But most people here in Mexico have already caught on that 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 type of game is is sought after by by PS3 collectors, since uh, PS3 collectors are very passionate to own pretty much every single game that came out. Not since that was like the first system that became a uh, multi-region without having to mod your console. Uh, most of the people in Mexico, uh, whenever they see that game, even like regular uh gamers or people that have like uh little uh, stalls in in mexican flea markets they'll they'll grab those games and they'll and they know that they'll take them to another person and they'll trade them and they'll eventually get get their get their money back or or get more than their money back so that the travel travel card is, is a good example of mm -hmm. of a of a mexican exclusive game that that's wanted all around the world so you don't you don't find ten dollar copies of el chavo card at in Mexican flea. Let's see. Someone says yep. anything you do, you should let us know. you're looking out for or can't find right now. Uh, there's nothing, nothing really on Switch that, that I'm looking for. I mean, I, like I said I live on the on the U.S. border with Mexico, so I'm back and forth. So I have my options of, of checking on Amazon or eBay, which I don't really shop on eBay, but usually Target, Walmart, Amazon, GameStop, those places uh, can get can you can get pretty much any game so uh if, there, if there's any switch game i want to buy it's usually just uh probably like an rpg but i can just uh pre-order that on gamestop or, or just order it on amazon when it comes out you know, Mario see, any big right? game to find on ps4 collecting in mexico uh, well ps4 or ps4 games in mexico is well where, I, where i'm at it's usually just the same games that are that are here in the in the U.S. They're just like I said, they're barely trickling into Mexico since I'm on the border with the United States. So there's there's people that actually well, if people do want a, a PS4 game that's that's kind of rare in Mexico, it would be uh, fighting games. So fighting games like like a King of Fighters that just came out. I know some people like that on Steam. But there's people out there, and there's there's big fighting game fans in Mexico, and they love their arcade sticks, so they'll want to get uh, King of Fighters. Uh, I think it was 15 or 16 that came out, so they they would want to get it physical. But a lot of people would just are happy enough playing the digital game on, on Steam. And TJ Beam says that there's Lucha Libre on the Wii, so yeah, that one that one's a the AAA game. It's a Triple A, so that one's actually pretty rare in in the united states is usually more found than like i haven't gone to other states we've lost joel again i'm sure we'll come right back yeah Le lucha libre on the ps3 is quite a hard game to find as well um, i was going to mention that um there are a lot of wrestling variants that mexico get um so a lot of the wrestling games, Mexico will have like Rey Mysterio on the front cover instead of having the wrestler that America put on the front cover, etc. Yeah, so there are some wrestling games in in Mexico. Well, actually, there were there were U.S. games, 
but they 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 kind of cater them towards the Latin American market. So there are some uh, that triple A wrestling game. Uh, not many people in the U.S. know about it, but it's, it's popular in Mexico. So I guess it figures that that game can sell well in Mexico. So it came out on the Wii, the PS3, and the 360, and I think uh, for the fans, I think all of them. All of them were, are, are sought after by, by collectors, especially since wrestling games are pretty common. But I mean, no one's gonna say, "Oh, I have a wrestling game from Mexico." So that that one that one makes it more interesting to have in the, in the collection. DJ was saying, I think the Mexican version wasn't officially released. That's interesting. Because you would have expected it to sell really well too. Yeah, possibly. Well, Joel, we might call that a show, man. It was really good having you on, and I'm sure we'll get you back on in the future. And thanks so much for coming on, man. Yeah, yeah it was, really it, cool, this was man. fun. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see if we can do another one soon. And again, yeah. congrats on dominating the quiz. That was, uh, that was <laughs> yeah, awesome. whatever. It was rigged. <laughs> well, I try. Those so. were clearly biased towards Mexican viewers. No, I have no idea. <laughs> just, yeah, especially with that cookie book. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I want to know. Is that this? I, does everyone here read that book? Am I the only one? I'm, <laughs> I've like, never, I've never, I've never heard the of last that cookie. Book. Yeah, the last cookie. So that was probably like that was one of my books I had to read at school. What are you talking this about? This is number one company book in Russia. What are you talking about? Everyone read cookie book. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I do remember reading If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. You just Googled most popular books in America and it popped up. Yeah. Top five is porn in America. <laughs> anyway, all right, we've gone off the rails. Let's just probably end it. All right. Thanks, all everyone, right. for watching. We'll see you all guys. Right. Good, good, or good morning, wherever you're at. See you guys. You found the coolest place to be The PlayStation Connect Things, nerds, and go on Won't you stay with me? Welcome to the show Gather round the boys and girls Collectors from around the world Let's oh, show the people what they need to know Welcome to the show Gonna talk to them What we got to say Gonna put their knowledge to the test Gonna laugh at me Gonna live the dream Gonna show you Yeah! Oh.